I love Ed on CPM. It's often derided, but I think it's just misunderstood. And with a little practice, its true value can really shine through. It's simple, it doesn't have many commands, but those that it does have can be combined together. And once you get used to it, most editing tasks are pretty quick. If I'm editing text that's made up of separate lines about the width of the terminal, then I find it excellent. So it's ideal for editing source code, config files, things like that under CPM. It comes as standard with CBM and it's only and it's only 7k for CPM 2.2, it's 10k on CPM plus. And one of the great advantages of Ed is that it'll work both with teleprinters and video terminals without having to be configured for each device. And uh, it's also good at manipulating large files even when the system is short of memory. In this video I want to show Ed in operation and how it can be used properly and why I like it. But before I do I need to explain a little bit about what uh, how Ed works. So Ed works by opening a file, uh, so we'll call it pilot.temp. Uh, so it's the pilot source code this is, well it's actually a copy of the pilot source code. If I edit it in this way it'll edit in place. If I were to put a, a drive after it then it would save the output file to the B drive and if I was using a CPM plus I could actually rename it to another file. But in this case I'm just going to open it as pilot.temp. So if I open it like that and then it's a modal editor. So we start in command mode here and then we can enter data uh, by switching into input mode by using the I command. So it's very much like Vi, except that you only except that you can only enter text in the non-command mode. You can't edit it. And then to exit from data input mode and return to the command mode, you use uh, Control Z like that. And then once you open the file, Ed will create a temporary output file with a similar name to the source file. So in this case, there'll be a temporary output file called pilot dollar dollar dollar. And then as you write out to Ed, it goes to this temporary file. And then when you finish a session uh, with either E or H, uh, the E or H commands, it'll copy the original source file to a file with a .back extension, and then it'll rename the temporary output file to the same name as the original source file. And then to work with the file, we have a memory buffer in which we append text from the source file into it. We can also uh, create new entries in the memory buffer, and then we can save that as we go to the temporary output file which will eventually, depending on how we exit, uh, will become uh, will re replace the original source file, unless it's on another drive. Uh, whilst we're doing that, Ed will keep a track of the line number that we're on, it'll keep a track on where it is in the source file, and it'll keep a track of the character pointer on the line. I'm not going to give a fuller explanation of that of this, but there's, um, there's some more details on the accompanying article, and there's a link to the CPM editor section of the manual, the uh, CPM 2.2 operating manual, which gives a pretty good explanation of how it works in general. Okay, so let's experiment with editing our pilot.temp. So the first thing we need to do is bring in some of the source file into the memory buffer. Uh, we use this using the A command, and if we put a number before it, it specifies the number of lines that we want to bring in from the source file. So for example, we did 10A, it would bring in 10 lines, if we did hash a, it would bring as many lines as it could. So hash at, actually in this case would represent 6535, but that would be too many lines for the buffer in any case, but it would try to bring in as many lines. So if it was a 10 line file, for example, it would just bring them all into the memory buffer. In this case, because pilot.temp is a big file, I think it's about 67K, I'm going to use 0A, which brings in enough source to fill up half the buffer and uh, that will load up and then once it's loaded we'll start at line 1 here. So if I do 0p and that will display a page of text. Now you can see that the first line is missing and that's because some of the lines with the, num with the numbers, uh, the line numbers being shown, it causes the line to wrap and therefore it's too much to display on one page. So if I do minus v that'll turn off the line numbers and then uh, 0p will display that page and we can see it's displayed properly this time. But I'll put the line numbers back on because they're pretty handy. And then we can advance through the file like that. As we're just doing p. And then if we want to go back a page, minus p. And if we want to go to the start of the file, we press b. 
and there we are line one and we can even uh, chain these together so if I press B and then 0p so b goes to the beginning of the file 0p displays the page without advancing and then we can just press enter to go through the lines we could display do something like 10t which would display uh, 10 lines of code that will just t on its own will display the current line and then uh, we could move through and then we could move the character pointer by using the c command so if I went to line 11, and then this is the modified to interface with the CPM line, you can see under the top of the screen. And if I want to insert something there between the M and the modified part of modified, then I could advance forward three spaces. We can use three and then C, or I could just go like that, whichever it makes no difference because it's just chained. And then I could insert something. I could put in FOD there. You can see that I've put an I, a, a lowercase i, and then FOD, and that would put lowercase FOD in that place. However, if I use a capital I, then it will capitalize whatever I put in. So if I do that, and then we'll display the line again. So you can see I've chaining quite a long command here. And there we are. It's put in uh, M FOD modified, and you can see it was capitalized using the uh, capital I. And then if we wanted to see where we are on that line, just press T and we can see where the character pointer is. Normally, however, I don't use the C command all that much because it's generally quicker to move around in the string using the F command. So if I wanted to remove that FOD that I just put in, I could do minus 3D and then we'll redisplay the whole line. By, putting the, by using this 0TT, it shows me the whole line without actually moving the character pointer, which is pretty handy. I could equally have done 0L, which would move me to the beginning of the line, and then T, but then that would have moved the character pointer. So if I show T now, you can see we're at the beginning of the line. Uh, great, so that's really easy. And then if I wanted to ins insert more text, I could just press I at this point, and I'll move to the next line, I, and I can put as much text as I want here. In fact, before I do that, I'll right there we are, and then press enter, control Z, and then I'll go back three lines, and then display three lines. There we are, and. Uh, we can see I've altered by L Woodman. What I was going to show is if I use the capital I again, it'll put that in in caps lock. So if I go to line 12, I'll kill that line, I'll reinsert with a capital I, and then put that again. So I'm entering it in lowercase. But this time you can see that it's, um, it's, it's changed it to uppercase. So that makes it really easy when you're working with, uh, with files that you're expecting things to be in uppercase, uh, which lots of assembler is, uh, particularly when you're altering old assembler. So uh, newer, newer programs were often written using uppercase and lowercase, but older programs, I mean, this was from 1977, were written just in, uh, just in uppercase. So if you were altering older programs, then you might want to stick to the case convention that was used in those programs. Uh, so there we are. So it shows really easy anyway uh, how to move around the file, how to move the character pointer on the uh, on the line, and then we can do simple things like uh, finding and substituting text. So if I go to zero p, if I wanted to on the line eleven, see we have a CPM there. Let's say I wanted to find all the versions of CPM, all the lines with CPM on it. There's a few different ways I could do this. Um, we, we can do macro commands. So we could do something like find, uh, in fact I'll demonstrate this without using the macro first, find CPM, and it's just like that. Uh, and then if I press enter, it brings me to line 11. Uh, yes, uh, so what I should explain. It puts the, uh, the character pointer just after the text that it's found. So you can see here, uh, I did 0t, and that has immediately preceded that CPM. 
uh, which is what we were looking for. So I could do this to find all occurrences of CPM in the file. So if I go back to the beginning, and I could do macro find CPM and then display the lines. So I'm using control Z to indicate the end of the argument for, uh, for the find command and then zero TT. What I might do as well is add a pause as well. So the Z command allows you to create a pause. So this would pause for uh, six ticks. And there we are. So it's going through and displaying each, each line with CPM. And then if you don't specify the number of times that you want to execute the macro, it'll execute each time, it'll keep on executing until it returns an error. So in this case, it got to the end of the, bu the buffer and then returns an error. So uh, that's a nice easy way of repeating commands and you can chain those up to great long commands. So here, you see there that I had uh, one, two, three, four commands as part of that macro. So that can make life quite easy. And then if I wanted to substitute some text, so say I wanted to substitute all occurrences of CPM. Oh, well, there's a few different ways I could do that. If I go back to the beginning again, right, it's the beginning of the text. I'm going to use the macro again and uh, to find CPM and then display the line so that we can see it. Pause for six ticks. Go to the beginning of the line. I'm going to alter and so substitute CPM for CP stroke M and control Z. So this will go through, it'll display each line, give me a chance to pause, and then if I don't want to change, I can press control C and that will uh, quit out of it. So let's do that. So there we are, that's the line there. Oh, I don't want to do that one, so I'll exit out of that. And then I could advance uh, a few characters, so I could uh, go to the next line, and then I could put in that line once again. So this is a little bit more laborious, but at least it gives us the chance to And then it's going through, it got to the end of the memory buffer. And then if I go to the beginning, we can see that it altified line 11, modified to interface with CPM. Uh, we kept line 16 the same, didn't touch that. And then on line 23 at the bottom, uh, we altered it to CPM. So uh, yeah, the macro facility really very useful. The next command I want to show is the juxtapose command. So if I go to line 11, and then if I display line 11, We've got where it says uh, modify to inter interface with CPM. If I wanted to alter the text between where it says to and CPM with something else, then I can do this easily using the juxtapose command. So I would say to, and then I want to put in there, uh, let's say work on, and I want to do that up to where it says CP. Then if I redisplay that line, okay, so I've forgotten the space uh, before the uh, the CP. So I can easily insert that though. So uh, we can see where we are on the line here. So I just need to insert space and then redisplay the line. And there we are. So that's easily corrected. And again, it just really shows how easy it is to, uh, to move around uh, and alter those sort of simple little mistakes that you'll often make when you're using an editor that doesn't use this sort of modal format. And I want to show some copy and pasting. So to do that, I'm going to come out of this editor this, I'm going to edit a file. So I'm going to edit the file t.tmp. I'll bring in the text in this document and then we'll display it all. So hash t is again just displaying everything I knew it was a short file so I didn't have to worry about that. And there's a few things I'd like to show here. So at the moment I'm on CPM 2.2. So I can go to line one, I'm already on line one, and I can exchange that and this will save a copy of that line to the uh, the temporary file. So it's along the lines of x uh, dollar 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 dot lib. And then if I go to the end of the file, and then I can read that file back in. And then if I look at the whole file, and there we are. There we are. Uh, so if I go to end again and read, maybe I'll read it twice. Ah, silly mistake. Ah, uh -uh, we'll try and load in a file called r dot lib. What I'd actually want to do if I wanted to run 
uh, r twice would be to do would be to use the macro command so i would do 2 m r control z and that would run r twice There we are. So I can read that in. Uh, so that can be quite useful. On CPM Plus, you can also specify a file name. So I think I'll demonstrate that actually because I think it works quite well. well I don't normally use CPM Plus systems, but I'll, I'll switch over to one now. Okay, so I'm on a CPM Plus system now. And then if I edit the t.temp file I had before, load it in, display the file, and then I can name where I save to with this. So if I, on line one, if I save that to the file A, so that it'll actually be a.lib because it defaults to a .lib extension. And if I go to line two, I could just press enter there, but in any case, if I go to line two and then xb, save to a file called b.lib. And then if I go to the end of the file, if I were to load in using my read command, and then if I display the whole file, there we are. So I'm loading in the a.lib, and then if I went to the end of the file again, and then let's have a look at that, and we can see that it loaded in the b.lib. So it's great because it means I can have several copy buffers to copy and paste with, and I can do uh, copy and pasting with ranges. So I could just as easily have done, uh, let's have a look, I could have done one, two, three, and then x to c. And then if I went to minus b, uh, so that's the end of the file, and then I read c in, and then let's the whole file, and there we are. So that's loaded it in. So uh, copy and pasting really easy. Another standard function with uh, with uh, with editors. And the last thing I want to show is how to use big files. Uh, so this is something that not every editor is able to do. So if I edit, we'll go back to our pilot.tmp file. First of all, I'm going to use my zero a, and that'll load in half the file. Uh, sorry, it'll load up till half the buffer is full. I know that the first buffer, the first page, we'll go to the end of the page, in fact, into the uh, memory buffer. We we'll go to the end of the memory buffer, and then line 590. And then if I wanted to load in another memory, half memory buffer full of source code, then I'd write what I've got, and then I would load another set in. And then, so we were at 590 was the end of the buffer, and then if I page through it, you can see we've gone further. If I do B, it'll only bring me to 591, because that's where we are in the source file. Uh, because uh, it can't keep everything in memory, so it had to write out what it, had, what it already had, and then load in more. So if I go to the end of the file, and there we are, we're at uh, line 1127. I can do exactly the same process again, write out, load in, and uh, this allows us to use, okay, yeah, the disk is full, never mind, it's because of the temporary file on the disk. But you get the point, it allows us to move through big files and edit those without any real problem. I've reset the session because I want to show one command that's particularly useful for handling uh, big files. So it's the n command. So this is like the find command that I showed earlier, but this will actually automatically append data to the buffer and then write it out as it works through the source file, no matter the size. So if I look for CPM in the pilot.temp file we were using before, and then it'll append into it, search through the source file until it finds it, and then, there we are, it's found a line. Then I can do that again, and it's found another line, uh, sorry, there we are, and then I'll do it again, again, and I think, there we are, so now we can see it's taking its time, and that's because it's had to write out and append more until it eventually finds, uh, finds another occurrence of CPM. Right, and there we are. So it's found another occurrence, what, uh, 1968. So that's brilliant for, uh, for searching through long files. And then if I quit out of this again, and go back in, 
I want to show how we could use that macro that we used earlier. So we used the macro to replace all the occurrences of CPM with CP stroke M. But uh, if I do that again using the N command instead of the F command. I used a 0L before, but really I should have used minus 3C uh, in case there's more than one occurrence of CPM on the line. Yeah. And then that will run through uh, exactly as it was before, um, but this time it'll go through and replace each one. I've not paused it on the uh, ones that are wrong to replace it on just because I want to show it being used. Uh, so I left it the CPM EQ line uh, altering. But, uh, but the main point is you can see how it's working through the file, making these alterations, loading the source in, altering it, writing it out, and then loading more in. And there we are. So that's come to the end of the file. If I press the H command, which would then save the remainder of the buffer to the temporary file, and then that would be renamed to the source file, the original source file. And if I press H, it'll load it back in again. And then if we go through now, so if we look at line 11, yeah, sorry. Right, and then we go to line 11. And there we are, we can see we've modified with CPM, line 15, uh, line 22. And then we'd have to go through to be able to find the rest of it. But in any case, it's shown how it works. Before I wrap up this video, I want to show one more thing, and that's the uh, the joining and splitting of lines. The reason I want to show it is that people used to complain that Ed was difficult to manage uh, to do this with, and um, and it really wasn't a problem at all. And uh, just demonstrate that now. So I'm using my t.temp file that we had before. We'll load it in, and at the end of each line, uh, the sequence uh, carried return line feed and we can uh, use the control L sequence to, um, to stand for that. So if I go to line one, I'm going to substitute control L for nothing. And that will basically just remove the uh, control L from that line. And then if I was to go to the back beginning, and there we are, we've joined the line. And if I wanted to split that line, again, really easy. So I could search for, in this case today, just check that we're at the right place. Yep. And then all I need to do is just do an insert. Well, I could just do an insert control L, control Z like that. Uh, or, um, well, that's the easiest way. And then there we are. We've split the line. So as promised, really simple. Well, hopefully you enjoyed seeing Ed being used properly. You can see a little bit of the power that it has. Uh, if you too like Ed, do let me know in the comments below. Uh, maybe we're not the only ones. Yeah, I think Ed is great for editing text that consists of uh, separate lines that are about the width of the screen uh, no longer. And I admit it's not much good for continuous prose because the maximum line length is 128 characters. So for this sort of text, of course, horses for courses, for continuous prose you would use a word processor such as WordStar, which would be much better. But otherwise, I'm really happy with Ed. I, I use it often and hopefully you'll be persuaded to give it a go. Do have a look at the accompanying article on the Tech Tinkering website and do subscribe to the Tech Tinkering YouTube channel and have a look at some of our other videos.